I have once again collected too many drawing surfaces. So many paper pads, pads of canvas paper, canvas panels, gesso panels. I don't really like canvas and I really try to minimize the amount that I have. Thankfully, I haven't collected too much actual canvas. That has stayed to a minimum, but I do have quite a few gesso panels. Gesso panels are my favorite to use. I like having them on hand, but I haven't used them in a while and they're kind of collecting dust. So today, we're gonna use one. <laughs> we are going to use up a gesso panel. I haven't just done like a super chill portrait painting in a while. At least it feels like it. Um, you know, I've been busy, I've been grinding. We'll talk about kind of some life updates and some stuff that I've got going on. And that will explain why I haven't really had time for stuff like this. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna paint a portrait <laughs> and we're also gonna answer some questions that you've asked me. So yeah, it should be fun. I encourage you to grab something for yourself to work on, whether it's a project, schoolwork, or your sketchbook. Take this time to do some fun art stuff or some homework, whatever you gotta do, whatever you gotta do, let's do it together. You guys know I love having an art date and now is a great time. I also wanna thank my patrons, your names are on screen. Thank you so much for your support. Every month we do fun exclusive stuff. We have a chat room, we have exclusive art updates, a podcast, an exclusive video and stuff that's mailed to you, including a postcard and a sticker. So if you're interested in any of those things, you wanna support me further, go check that out. And finally, before we get into the art, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Book of the Month. Book of the Month curates a selection of books from hundreds, hundreds of books. They pick just the, like the best of the best, the cream of the crop. And then every month they present those options to you. I think it's so cool. It is overwhelming how many books are, there are out there and like kind of picking your next one can be really difficult sometimes. Book of the Month just makes it easier because it's like, hey, here's five books. You know, they're all gonna be great. They're all good picks. You can't go wrong. Have at it. It saves you time. It makes it easier to choose what you're gonna read and overall makes your experience a little easier. They also focus on new and emerging authors and titles. So it helps you discover like new people and new themes and genres and whatever that you might not have really been interested in otherwise. I like to use book of the month to kind of branch out and try things that aren't my like general go-tos because I trust that it's gonna be a good book. So it's a great way to test out, do I like this genre? I've also found some of my favorite authors and favorite books through book of the month that I never ever would have found without them. The value of book of the month is honestly unmatched. If you're a reader, you know hardcover prices not fun, not good. But with Book of the Month, you can get new release hardcover fiction and it's like nothing compared to off the shelf prices. Not to mention they have free shipping and a loyalty rewards program. So you know it's worth it. They've also recently released audiobooks, So if you prefer to listen to your books, they now have choices for you as well. Everybody gets to read, we love it. They also have a super fun app where you can like pick your books, track your reading progress, love it. Let me show you my choices this month. We have Neighbors and Other Stories by Diane Oliver. It's a collection of stories following characters in the Jim Crow era. We've got some adjectives here. Crisp and chilling tales, insightful stories, nightmarish. It sounds crazy, it sounds interesting. I'm really excited to read this. Look at this cover, it's beautiful, oh my God. The Fox Wife by Yang Zichu. Set in Manchuria, 1908, Dying King Empire. It sounds magical and beautiful and atmospheric and I can't wait. Look at how big these books are. It's crazy. I have yet to be disappointed by a book of the month book. I can't recommend them enough. If you're a reader, I really think that it can offer you so much. The things that I've been exposed to, the way my, the things that I've been exposed to, the way my horizons have been broadened just by book of the month is indescribable. Just go to bookofthemonth.com. You can join for free, grab your book today. I guarantee you, you're gonna love it. I know I have. Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring. Now without further ado, let's get into the art. Before we get into this, I do wanna say, um, there's a guy doing lawn work. He's not doing it right now. If you hear it start up, sorry. He's going at it all day. I can't, I can't do anything about it. Now let's get into this. So this portrait is referenced from Pinterest. As always, my Pinterest is linked down below. If you wanna see the reference, use it yourself, or you can check out any of my other boards. I've got a whole board of references of all sorts of subjects. Um, if you like to keep up to date with me over there, you can sometimes like see what I'm about to be working on because you'll see like a crazy influx of like 20 of the same subject or pin. So just let you know, in case you'd like to check that out, I get asked all the time if I have a Pinterest, it's always linked down below. If you ever wanna know where a photo comes from, that's the place. Um, I actually was not going to draw this photo. I had another pin that was really, really calling to me. And I started the sketch on the gesso board and I just hated how it was looking. I was not vibing with it. I think this particular reference is just better suited for like a sketchbook, you know, alcohol marker drawing. So I swapped it out with this other reference, which I also liked a lot. I love when portraits have that little bit of rim lighting, like highlights. I'm such a sucker for it. It will automatically make the piece so much more interesting to me and like 
make me want to immediately draw it. Although there were plenty of things about this reference that intrigued me. I'd love the shapes that the braids make, the delicateness of the model's features, the colors, overall. It looks super fun and I had a great time painting it. So for this voiceover, I was honestly too brain dead to come up with like one solid topic to discuss. I love when I get to do those kind of like deep dive, <laughs> to, you know, about a topic um, when I do these voiceovers. It's usually about something that I find interesting or I have opinions on, but you know, it is hard to come up with something interesting to talk about for 20 minutes straight that often, especially when I'm just like brain dead. So I thought I would call a friend today. They're phoning it in a bit. Um, we're gonna do a quick little life update and then a small Q and A. There's always, you know, new people coming to the channel and obviously you all don't watch every single video I put out or have ever made. So I think it's nice to do these little check-ins sometimes where you guys can maybe get to know me a bit better or like the FAQs, we can kind of cover those every once in a while, right? So quick life update. My life is pretty much on hold for a bit, which is fun. I have, I have officially started work on the graphic novel, like final pages type of work. And I, I literally just finished up illustrating like page 13 when I started writing this, I had just finished the 17th page. I think it's a 13, but it's 17. I need to be done by March. Technically, I need to be done like way before the end of March. So I have time to kind of tweak colors and stuff. Um, so that means that I have to be doing more than one page per day. Each page takes about five-ish hours as of now. It was in the beginning, it was more like six or seven plus hours, but I'm working on getting faster as I get more into it, um, as I'm getting into the groove. So a lot of my time is spent on that, obviously. And then around that, I'm trying to like not let my own job fall through the cracks. I'm still getting used to balancing everything. So like this past week or so has been rougher. Like my last two videos, like this one and the last one were pretty rushed and last minute because I had been so in the zone with the graphic novel that I like forgot to be thinking ahead of videos and to get them out on time because obviously I can't like film them the day they're going out. Like they have to be done like a week in advance and I like forgot. <laughs> I also haven't had time to like restock and reopen my shop. I did that this morning. I made myself do it this morning. That was supposed to be done like the, fir like, the first thing this month. Thankfully I was able to get it done. Uh, otherwise I probably would have not done it for another two months. But yeah, filming a video is like an all day job, but then the graphic novel is like an all day job and neither of them can wait. <laughs> so, you know, it's been a lot. It's been a lot to juggle and I haven't quite figured out how to balance it yet. I'm sure I will, I have time. I obviously haven't had time to work on any of my goals for this year. And I don't think I'm going to have time for that until the graphic novel is done. And for the next few months, you might see a bit of a decline in video quality, which is the exact opposite of what I wanted, but it's temporary. It's just while I get through this and get that graphic novel done. And then I plan on really hit the ground running with all of my own stuff. The graphic novel itself is going great. I'm really happy with what I'm doing and it seems like the writer is really happy. So great, love it. I'm really, really excited to see it all come together and have like a physical thing of my work. You know what I mean? Uh, but until then, I'm really trying to like keep my head down and grind and get it done. And that's it. That is pretty much the only life update I have for you guys because that's all my life has been. It's just like trying to get this work done. Although also I just finished watching The Bear. I watched it twice in a row back to back and I really like it. Very stressful, very stressful show, but I love the imagery and storytelling and how real the characters and dialogue are. Great show. I did get questions about what show I've been watching recently, The Bear. Now let's get into aing these cues. We'll start with questions again on YouTube and then we'll get to Instagram. Oh, and also before we get started, if you ask the question, especially if it's anything about art and I didn't answer and you're like dying to know, uh, please just browse through my other videos, check out their titles. If I didn't answer something in this video, it's probably because I've made like a whole dedicated video about it. So just keep that in mind. I got multiple questions that were like, I've literally made a whole video dedicated to that topic. So that if I didn't answer here, there's probably an answer somewhere else. Okay, let's go. Frago is free asks, would you ever show us your young self's art like primary or elementary school? I think I have. I'm pretty sure I've shown what there is to show. One of my oldest ever videos is flipping through some of my high school sketchbooks. I've also shown my high school AP art portfolio in a dedicated video. And some of my sketchbook tours are of, I think, I think old high school sketchbooks, if I remember right. I think I've shown most of like the, the worthwhile art that I still have from when I was younger. I don't know if I'll do it. I certainly won't make any dedicated videos about it. Maybe on Instagram I would, but I just feel like that would just be re like repetitive at this point. 
If you really want to see, um, you can hunt for it. You can also scroll way back on my Instagram and there are some throwback posts where I show like my growth over time. But yeah, I probably won't be doing anything notable around that anytime soon. Frago is free also asked, have you always had a passion for art or was it something you found later in life? So um, art actually runs in my family. My great uncle is an amazing artist. He taught his mom how to paint and she was like immediately brilliant at it. My dad grew up drawing and then I grew up watching him and being drawn by him. My mom was super crafty and doing art was always just like super, super encouraged by my family. They put me in private classes and bought me supplies. So I've been doing it for literally my whole life. I didn't really start taking it seriously until right after high school because I had been in AP art in my senior year and I realized like, wow, <laughs> I don't compare it to my peers at all. Like they're all so good and I'm not even trying. And I wanted, you know, to be better than just like sometimes able to copy a photo, you know? Uh, and since then I've really found my passion for it. So I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have done art my whole life, but I also have only been doing art since I was an adult, a kind of a weird in between. I also got asked a lot of questions about my filming setup. I had no idea people were interested in that or that anyone cared. Um, so I will include that information in an upcoming vlog. It's all pretty basic, not really worth having its own video. So look out for that if you're interested. Galaxy Spider Cat asks, did you do art at university? I actually got a few questions like this. Also questions about what would I be doing now if not art? What did I think I was going to do before art? Things like that. Um, so I'm gonna answer all of those types of questions here. The answer is no, I have never studied art in school. I did take art classes in high school, but it was public school. It wasn't like anything legit. Um, in college, I got two degrees in neuroscience and psychology, and I worked as an EMT throughout most of college. Uh, and I thought I would be a physician's assistant or do something in medicine or emergency medicine. But even just doing like a collegiate emergency squad led to so much burnout for me that I knew um, I couldn't do it forever. I grew up thinking about all sorts of careers, notably journalism, something in law. <laughs> um, but then I took a psych class in high school and that stuff just like clicked so well for me. And at that point, I mostly thought about doing something in psychology. Now though, um, I've had a taste of this job, of the dream. And I honestly have no idea what I would wanna do if I ever left this. I, I literally have no idea. I think about it sometimes. Like, what am I gonna do if this doesn't work out, whatever. Um, but I don't know, because I just love doing this so much that pretty much everything else seems uninteresting or like a horrible nightmare. Like anything that I even used to find intriguing, I really don't anymore in comparison. Although my sister and I love putting on holiday stuff and planning parties. So we've always talked about, like we've started talking about like um, starting an event planning business <laughs> if we're ever like desperate for cash or something. Ava Lull 4196 and many others asked, would you ever do a large scale tutorial for art? This is a, I'm, I'm gonna, I don't think Ava Lull 4196 is looking for this kind of answer, but this is a discussion topic for me. Like we're gonna get into a little bit more than just like an answer. The answer is, just to the direct question, as of now, no. I think my videos now, like if you watch a lot of my videos and specifically my art process videos, they're not tutorials, but I think I go, especially further back, I don't do it as much anymore because I would just be repeating myself every time, but I, I do go somewhat in depth in discussing the process, my thought behind stuff. Uh, sometimes I offer advice or explain how I do something. And that so far, as of now, is as comfortable as I've ever felt in all the years that I've done this in teaching. That's the most comfortable I've ever been in terms of how much I'm willing to like, quote unquote, teach. Um, someone also did ask this. I do have a Skillshare class about portraiture where I obviously go way more in depth, but even that is still more about the process than me like telling you what to do. So technically I've done a few tutorial-esque things and I do have my Skillshare class. But I don't know, I don't like to do tutorials for lots of reasons. I'm not formally educated or trained. I don't know a lot of technical stuff, techniques, jargon. I just wouldn't feel comfortable like trying to teach masses of people stuff that I only have a casual understanding of. And I certainly wouldn't feel comfortable like profiting off of that. Skillshare is different. I've specifically formulated that class to be my understanding of it. It's not like claiming to teach you technical stuff. So that is different. But on YouTube, like I just wouldn't want to make it. I don't know. I don't like the idea of making tutorials me. Like I think I do know a lot about art, but I don't know what I know because I just learned over literally my entire lifetime through doing and observing and maybe the occasional teacher. 
So trying to communicate knowledge that is so innate to me is just very, very hard. And I think if I were to make a tutorial, it would be a lot of me saying like, and then I do this because that's just what I do. And like, I don't think that would be helpful to literally anyone. I also think, you know, there are a lot of tutorials out there and a lot of them are great and they're made by people who are good at teaching and are very knowledgeable. And I think they're helpful and I think they're great resources. But I also think there are a lot of tutorials out there and a lot of them are less about teaching you skills you can use generally and are more about taking you step by step through a piece and are a little bit more clickbaity. And I feel like when you when people ask for tutorials from me, I feel like that's what they like that's the only thing I can interpret that as meaning is asking for a step by step process because I feel like I've given I've talked enough about my process that like I've I you know what I mean I've shared enough that the only other thing that people could be asking for is a step by step process. I don't think that's people what people are actually asking for. Like I don't think that's what they mean. I just feel like that's what they mean. Like I said, I just don't know what that would mean besides me telling you step by step, line by line what to do. And I don't want to do that. I think it's really important that we learn from each other and consume as many resources as possible when we're trying to learn. You know, I like absolutely you should watch tutorials. At, growing up, I like would go to the library and borrow DVDs on like how to do certain things and books and whatever. I totally think that's great and important with the internet nowadays. I feel like there's a huge reliance on waiting for someone else to show or tell us how to do something. And we're not willing to do it until we have someone showing us step by step how to do it. I personally learned from literal years of just like messing around and trying and failing before I had anyone to show me or tell me. And I, I didn't know how the internet worked. So like before I had guidance, before I had the internet guidance, I was just like guessing. And I think that was really important. I think that was a huge part in my confidence in art and like learning how to do stuff myself. Like I feel really confident in my ability to pick up anything and eventually be good at it because that's how I learned in the first place. I think it's important to learn on your own through trial and error and to explore. And that can mean watching my videos or someone else's videos and like trying to copy my art. You know, that is included in like looking at other people for guidance. But I think it's more effective when it's done without me telling you what to do step by step. Like, does that, am I, is, am I making sense? I feel like it's so nuanced, like, and it's in my head, it makes sense. I feel like my words are not helping. But yeah, for the last five or you know, however many years I've been doing this, those have been my thoughts. So I doubt they're gonna change anytime soon. Doesn't mean they won't ever change. But for now, it's a no on tutorials. Um, I'm very flattered that so many people want that from me. I am very, very flattered, but I don't even know what that means. Like, I don't even know what it would mean for me to make a tutorial, no idea how to do it effectively. And I don't think I really have anything to offer you guys if I were to make a tutorial. And I don't think that it would be genuine of me to make one when I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. Art by Lane and 9316 had a few questions. We're gonna answer a couple of them. And finally, they've asked, how has gaining a following changed your life and your relationships? Again, kind of a bigger topic, kind of a difficult question to answer. My life is definitely different. Technically, I have been recognized um, and I know that there are people who watch me that live close to me and that's not a problem. It doesn't stress me out, doesn't worry me, except for the fact that I'm like, oh my God, I can't go out like looking disgusting, like, you know, in my pajamas and looking horrible. I'm like, what if someone sees me? And I do sometimes, again, it's more of a what if fear, like it's not an actual problem. Um, but I do worry about what will happen if someone recognizes me while I'm with family or like in an awkward moment. Um, but yeah, it doesn't actually bother me. It's, I'm not actually worried about it. It is really weird to like tell people that this is my job and to work with huge companies and get free stuff and have so, so many people like know of me. It's weird, it's really weird. People can be weird. They can be really, really great. Overall, it's wonderful. I haven't really had too many negative experiences. But yeah, people can be weird. It's weird to have people, I, I think it's really easy. I do it too, you know, when I'm watching someone online, it's easy to forget that they're like a real, genuine, whole person. And I can tell that people forget that about me a lot. And I get comments that are so like, I don't know, just like so weird. Um, so online, it has definitely been weird. In real life, like relationships, I think existing ones haven't changed. There are a lot of people that I don't tell, like extended family, I don't tell because I don't want them to know. I'm sure they do by now, but friends, it wasn't that big of a deal. It It is just like weird. And especially like when I'm meeting new people, I have to decide like, do I tell them? It's easier when I tell them right away, like right off the bat, be like, okay, here's my channel, check it out. Because it's just embarrassing. And I, I don't like people who know me in real life to watch my videos after they get to know me 
because it's like they get to know me and then they see the like I don't even think I put on that much of a persona but it's just I don't know imagine if like <laughs> Imagine if people just start, like read your diary, you know what I mean? That's kind of what it feels like. Even though it's obviously not, I make these videos to be public to people, but it's like if someone gets to know me as a person and then they, they read my diary entries and then they, ha it's just weird and uncomfortable. And it's also weird being like, you know, look how easy my life is while you work a nine to five. Um, it is weird. It doesn't, I don't think it's affected. I have had people like clearly try to they find out that I have some amount of like, I don't know, clout, I guess. And like, it's clear that that's why they want to be friends with me. I was on a dating app one time and there was this girl who wanted, she was only on the dating app to advertise for her art Instagram. And I didn't know that at first. And so she, but she was into art and I was like, oh my gosh, so am I. So she saw my Instagram and that was clear. She was clearly not into me. That was obviously the only reason that she wanted to like go out with me. It was like really weird. Um, I've had a few instances like that and it is strange. But overall, not bad. I haven't had any major issues. All right, let's move on to Instagram. Rin Kelly asks, have I ever thought about 3D art, crocheting, clay, sewing, etc.?" I do sew. Um, I've really gotten into sewing these past few months. I haven't had time right now, obviously, but I love sewing outfits for my American Girl dolls, but I'm not super good at it. And obviously, but I'm, I'm not super good at it. I have limited experience, um, but it's not something that I like advertise or share with you guys a lot. Cause it's just like, it's for me, it's chill. Um, I would love to get into all sorts of 3D art. My friend who crochets has been showing me the ropes a bit. I bought knitting needles. I plan on taking a ceramics class this year. Um, yeah, I've always been very interested. It is just something that obviously I have to pay money to, I have to invest into those supplies and stuff and time invest into learning those skills. And I don't always have those resources, but I'm interested in pretty much every medium all the time through everything, so. Kalani847 asks, what hobbies do you have outside of art? I'm into lots of stuff. A few video games, Stardew Valley, The Sims, RDR2. Um, I usually have to wait until I'm like in the mood to play them. Gaming does not come naturally to me. I'm not a huge gamer, but I'll go through like phases where like for two weeks straight, all I do is play those games. Um, I run and work out. I'm into yoga. I love going on walks. I could walk probably endlessly. <laughs> I love walking. I love nature, hiking, camping, reading, sewing. I collect American Girl dolls. I like rocks. I play guitar and piano and I like to sing. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, I think I said reading already. Yeah. So those are some of the things that I like to do in my free time when I have the time for it. Alina underscore Ste 21 asks, what is your dream art project if time, money, etc., didn't matter? And that is a wonderful question. And the answer is, I got no idea. I have no idea. I talked about this in my goals video for 2024, but you know, I don't know what kind of art I want to make or what I want to say or what is important to me, like as an artist and as a storyteller. Right now, you know, the past few years, I just like making small, like inconsequential stuff and messing around and learning and exploring. That's been wonderful and fulfilling for me. This year though, um, when I'm done with the graphic novel, I would really love to dedicate my time to figuring that out, figuring out what project I wanna do. Spook Onions asked, favorite drink? I am almost strictly a water drinker. I don't drink coffee, very rarely drink soda. Um, not an exaggeration, probably 98% of liquids I drink are water, unflavored water, lukewarm water too. I don't even do ice, <laughs> um, but I will tell you, all the drinks that I do find yummy, all of them. This is all of the drinks. Spearmint tea, root beer, vodka in OJ or Sprite, spiked bubbly drinks, Sutter Home pink Moscato wine, and that, uh, oh, cherry, like the cherry wine. What's that other thing called? There's another kind of like similar to root beer. It's um from up north. I can't remember what it's called, but that's about it. Larsen Ha, Larsen ha asks, um, the gods went nuts and you can only work with one media for the rest of your life. What do you pick? Hard, really hard, tough question, horrible, but I gotta go with markers. Um, I think they're the most versatile. I, they, I, they tend to be what I find most comfortable and I've been with them the longest. They've, they've truly withheld the test of time. Neve hyphen Baldry asks, do you always think you will be making art? Uh, truthfully, I have no idea. 
I can pretty easily picture a future life for me where art takes like a major backseat or where I just don't do it at all. Um, but I think that's super, super unlikely. Like I've been doing it my whole life. I can't imagine that I would quit. You know what I mean? I, I don't see why I would quit, but I I can be happy. I think I would be happy living a life where I wasn't doing art myself. I plan, I certainly plan to always do it. Um, but I also know that I have every potential to change as a person I, and I think I'm okay with that. So I don't plan on making any promises to myself that I, you know, I can't read the future. Um, I don't see why I would stop, but also maybe one day I just don't enjoy it anymore and it's fine. There we go. Some great questions. Thank you to everyone who took the time to ask something. You guys really saved the day here on this voiceover. Again, if I didn't answer your art related question and you're like dying to know, I probably have a whole video about it. And there were other questions that were really good, but were just like way too much to get into for this. And I will probably save those for a future video. So sorry if I didn't answer your question. Um, as always, I encourage you to go look at all of my other videos, watch all of those. I'm sure you will find some answers there. Slay. The colors ended up very desaturated, very dark. Also the difference in her face and her neck color, didn't notice until after I was done. <laughs> I don't think in the viewfinder it's looking very jarring. I think in person it's not that bad. It was fun. I had a good time. I think it's a little funky. Um, I think it's pretty. I think I would like to go back and just add a little bit more of intense highlights. I think she's just looking a little dull and lifeless right now. That's super easy. I want her glossy, radiant. I want her shining. Um, and right now she's looking a little sad. But yeah, I like it. I think it's really, really fun. I do like it. I also am happy with the way the star on her face turned out. I was totally winging that. And I think it is somewhat believable. So that's good. <laughs> Yeah, that's the video, that's the painting. I hope you got to work on something. Thank you to everyone who asked me a question. Thanks for everyone who watched, you're great. I'll remind you again to check out Book of the Month, check out my Patreon, and uh, have a wonderful day. I hope you had fun. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Go to Smart, bye.